The Lord speaks of peace to his people and his holy ones and to those who turn to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today we're celebrating a Requiem Mass for the repose of the soul of our brother Brian Berry, whose funeral takes place later on today. Brian journeyed to the Lord on the 9th of November, at the great age of 84, sadly succumbing to COVID-19. In our Mass today, we pray that he, set free from the pains and the frailties of this earthly life, may now rejoice with the angels and the saints in that life which for us is still to come. And as we pray for him, for his peace and rest and joy, let's pray for his family, his wife, his children, his grandchildren, and for all who knew him, that they may receive gifts of comfort and hope from the Lord to strengthen them in their journey in this life. As we think of this intention and our own intentions for our Mass today, we begin by calling to mind our own faults and failings and asking for the gift of the Lord's forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Brian, whom you have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw an angel come down from heaven with great authority given to him. The earth was lit up with his glory. At the top of his voice, he shouted, Babylon has fallen. Babylon the great has fallen and has become the haunt of devils and a lodging for every foul spirit and dirty, loathsome bird. Then a powerful angel picked up a boulder like a great millstone and as he hurled it into the sea he said, that is how the great city of Babylon is going to be hurled down, never to be seen again. Never again in you, Babylon, will be heard the song of harpists and minstrels, the music of flute and trumpet. Never again will craftsmen of every skill be found or the sound of the mill be heard. Never again will shine the light of the lamp. Never again will be heard the voices of bridegroom and bride. Your traders were the princes of the earth. All the nations were under your spell. After this, I seemed to hear the great sound of a huge crowd in heaven singing, Alleluia, victory and glory and power to our God. He judges fairly, he punishes justly, and he has condemned the famous prostitute who corrupted the earth with her fornication. He has avenged his servants that she killed. They sang again, Alleluia, the smoke of her will go up forever and ever. The angel said this, write this, happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing for joy. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Go within his gates, giving thanks. Enter his courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Stay awake and stand ready, because you do not know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you must realise that she will soon be laid desolate. Then those in Judea must escape to the mountains, those inside the city must leave it, and those in country districts must not take refuge in it. For this is the time of vengeance, when all that scripture says must be fulfilled. Alas for those with child or with babies at the breast when those days come. For great misery will descend on the land and wrath on this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive to every pagan country. And Jerusalem will be trampled down by the pagans until the age of the pagans is completely over. There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars. On earth, nations in agony, bewildered by the clamour of the ocean and its waves. Men dying of fear as they await what menaces the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our end of the world theme continues in our readings today. John's vision getting more and more glorious and triumphant. And yet the words of Jesus seeming to be darker and more threatening. Are they talking about the same thing? Well, they are because both the vision of St. John and the words of Jesus are prophesying what happens after the end. Notice at the very end, after Jesus has given all these warnings, he says, stand erect, hold your heads high because your liberation is near at hand. That is a good thing. Jesus is still proclaiming good news. How we receive this, in a sense, depends on where we put our own attention, our own lives, our own hopes, our own desires. If we put them in the things of this world, if somehow we are trapped in this world, then all we will know is the fear that Jesus describes. We will be like the city of Babylon in the first reading. Most people think that that actually refers to the city of Rome. Remember, this is being written at a time when the Romans are persecuting the Christians. So it's not surprising that St. John's vision proclaims the destruction of the persecutor, the destruction of the city of Rome, and does so in no uncertain terms. But he speaks of that destruction for those who have given themselves to that secular city. Notice how he mentions things like the craftsmen or the traders. Those people who have given themselves only to the things of this world 
they will face that disaster. For them, it is bad news. But for those who believe in something more, something greater, for those who believe in the kingdom of heaven, for those who believe in Jesus Christ, there is something more to come. The victory that that huge crowd sing of in heaven. And those words of Jesus, your liberation is near at hand. We must make sure that even though we live in this world, and we have to, we have to day by day, concern ourselves with the daily business of everyday life, we're not putting all our hopes on this world. We're not putting ourselves completely and solely into this world. We have minds and hearts that have space for heaven. We have minds and hearts that have room for Jesus. And the more we can place ourselves in him, then the less we will live in fear. Nothing will be able to shake that sense of liberation that Jesus promises, even death itself. Today we're celebrating this Requiem Mass for Brian Berry, and we're praying for him and for his family and friends and all who knew him. The word of Jesus is a word of hope, even though there may be pain in this present time. For any of us who've lost someone, we know what that means. Yet Jesus promises that there is more to come. There is that victory, that joy, that rejoicing, that liberation that our scripture readings have talked about today. And that is where, if we can, we must pin our hopes, we must place ourselves in that hope of all that is still to come. Those who have died have not gone from us, they have gone ahead of us. And we hope one day, after we have fulfilled the journey of our years in this world, we too hope to follow them. May the cries of victory, the song of celebration of the angels and the saints be the song of our departed brothers and sisters and our song. And in order to make sure we journey into that song, let us pin our hopes on Jesus Christ. So let's think of the prayers and intentions that we bring to the altar today. First today we pray for the repose of the soul of our brother Brian Berry, that after his long life he may receive the reward of his goodness and enter into the eternal life won for us by Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn for Brian, especially his family, his friends and all who knew him, and for all of us who know mourning and grief in our lives, that we may all receive gifts of comfort and hope and place that hope in Jesus Christ, who promises us final victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a moment in silence, let each of us think of our own prayers and intentions for Mass today. And we ask our Mother Mary for the help of her prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Brian, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Brian, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Brian, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love towards us is great. May the pious of angels come to meet you. May they speak you to paradise. May the Lord enfold you in his mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Brian 
may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filii heve. A te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Eha ergo, advocata nostra, Illos tuos misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, o pia, O oh, 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 dulcis, Virgo Mari.